Hi everybody, I'm Rick and uh, I've got the absolute privilege of overseeing New Wine Kids Ministry. And it is a privilege also to welcome you to these next three sessions of Rachel Turner looking at parenting in a post-pandemic world. Who knew that would be a seminar this time last year? But it is some incredible stuff is coming at you from Rachel. I encourage you to grab hold of pen and paper. It is just some absolute nuggets of stuff to help you parent your children in a life of faith. So I encourage you to um, pray with me now as we uh, enter into this session. So Lord, I thank you for Rachel. Thank you for all that you have taught her and all the information and wisdom that she is gonna give us now. Help us to understand, Lord, speak to us clearly as parents. Help us to enable our children to have a life of faith with you. What a privilege it is to have that role. Speak to us, I pray. In your name. Amen. Hello, my name is Rachel Turner, and this session is about parenting for faith in a post-pandemic world, which I have to say, when I say it really fast, there's a lot of peas in it. Parenting for faith in a post-pandemic world, which makes me happy to say. Uh, I am really missing new wine, like I'm sure you are, but I'm also enjoying the feeling of being clean. So it's like here, there, and everywhere. But I'm so pleased that we get these few moments. Today's a, a short session, 18 minutes, just to get in, get out, give you some next steps in your journey of helping your kids meet and know God. Uh, my name is Rachel Turner. I'm with the organization Parenting for Faith, and uh, I help parents, I guess, feel more confident in the thing that God has already called you to do and the thing you're already doing really well, which is helping your kids know God. I wanted to just take a few minutes, I guess, to encourage you in this weird season that we're in, this um, the crisis has hit and we're beginning to emerge out of it and we can begin to see a glimmer of the next new temporary normal. And where do we fit in all of this? How do we help our kids meet and know God in this season and this transition coming out of the lockdown into the world and helping them still see God in it? Uh, I just wanted to, uh, to pause to just remind us that this isn't about how can we teach our kids more about God or how can we help them grow in their knowledge of God. All of that God's smartness is is important. It's, it's what gives them a foundation of scripture and understanding. But I'm sure we all share this heart that, that it's more than just how do we help our kids learn about God, but we want our kids to be God connected, to be able to access his love and his guidance and his healing, to move in their purpose and power as children of the living God. We want them to know his voice and to get his words and to walk in that freedom of the spirit. And that's what we're talking about when we're talking about helping our kids meet and know God. It's helping them to grow beyond God's smart and to God connected. And that is 100% possible. In this season, um, lockdown has been significant. You may not know it, but you've been doing loads of helping your kids meet and know God in this season. Because one of the prime gifts that God gives to children is us as parents. And we do things as parents because we're in their face all the time. We are around them. We are the main influences of their life and how we walk our lives with God impacts our kids. And this lockdown season has given us an opportunity to um, grow and be strong in different areas of this Parenting for Faith thing. And so what I wanna do is just give us four or five main things we can do in this temporary middle ground season that can really help our kids in faith. The first one is to maintain and grow this really significant emotional connection with our kids. I know that sounds completely weird because we're talking about parenting for faith, but actually um, studies have shown again and again that the emotional connection between parents and children, um, that emotional connection uh, is really significant in how our children are influenced and can learn from their parents. Uh, it's because when we feel loved by someone, when we admire someone, when we feel safe in someone's space, 
then we are open to being vulnerable. And faith is very much a journey of vulnerability and of learning and getting it wrong and, and exploring things that make us question. And so all of that time that you spend in lockdown, <laughs> Um, playing games and being around each other and 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 laughing together and just being in each other's space is really significant. We know there's a difference between connection and between just general proximity. Connection is about that caring for each other's hearts, that mutual delight of each other. And so as you are looking at emerging into a season of much more busyness, as lockdown ends and as we emerge back into school and back into church and back into clubs and things, maintaining this connection that you may have been able to grow, or actually you may have just been fried and lockdown has been a survival mode for you, that's okay. If you're looking at how can I help my kids' faith grow in this next season, turning your attention, maybe changing nothing else, but just how can I reconnect emotionally with my kids can be really significant to their faith. Uh, and that could just be as simple as asking good questions or smiling at them when they come in the room or taking that extra 10 minutes at bedtime, even though you're like, I need to go. I don't want to be around people anymore. And just give that extra bit of emotional attention significantly allows your child to watch what you're doing with your life and to ask the big questions. So maintain and grow that connection that you have strength of and come up with a plan of how you're going to continue to keep that growth when you go back and busyness takes over, because that is so significant to your kid's faith. The second thing I would suggest is to create windows into your transition back out into the world. Our kids have been living in a bubble. Now, it may have been an excruciating bubble. It may have been the best bubble in the history world ever. It could have been lonely. It could have been painful. It could have been a sheer delight, but they've been living in a bubble and they're moving out of the bubble they've been in into something different. And change is hard for everybody, including children. And so if we're wanting them to meet with God significantly in this transition, then our kids need to be able to look and see, how do I handle change with God? How do I handle um, fear and worry and excitement and uncertainty with God. And one of the greatest things God gave them is you to be able to say, this is what it looks like for me. This isn't how it has to look for you. This isn't uh, the way that it has to be done. But there are people in this house and we're all trying to journey along with God. And for me, I welcome you to see what it looks like for me. And for me, I'm actually a bit worried about going back to life in school because I'm gonna miss the peacefulness of our afternoons or I'm gonna miss being around you, my teenager who I adore and I'm afraid you're just gonna you know, disappear and I'm gonna miss you so much because I've loved being with you. Or uh, I'm actually not sure how I'm gonna handle all this change. I, I find that my peace is being shaken. And I, I've been really talking to God a lot about my peace and, and finding God's peace and my patterns of, you know, how when I put on that music when I do the dishes or when I go out in the morning outside and do my Joe Wicks and I play worship music instead of listening to him. All those patterns of peace, I'm really going to focus on how do I maintain that peace. Or I'm so excited I get to talk about Jesus to people who aren't us <laughs> and I finally get to share about him I've just been all pent up and I've been feeling sort of purposeless and I can't wait to get out there and like feel used by God even though I know I'm used here you know, whatever you're feeling it doesn't mean that you make your kids the dumping ground for your emotions but it means you give them a window into all of the different emotions they could be feeling and showing them where God fits into that for you it's about grabbing peace with God there or it's about being so excited about being active with God out there or uh, it's about finding those patterns of connecting with him even when you're not sure. Uh, what is going on in your life? What do you think your kids will be experiencing? And create windows into that, whether it's fear, worry, excitement.
parent. So maintain and grow your connection with your kids in this season. That helps them have their hearts turned towards you to be able to see God in their family. Create windows into your transition, your worries, your fears, so that they can see what life with God can look like in the bump in the bump of transition. The third thing is to facilitate their God connection. It is so important for our kids to learn a pattern of prayer that works for them. It can be so easy for us to want to help our kids pray, to help our kids find a formula of prayer. So when we gather together, we give them all these corporate experiences. We pray together at bedtime, we pray together at lunch, we pray together, we worship together, we do church together. And then when they're left on their own to have this one-to-one connection with God, they can stumble a bit because we're asking them to do life with God on their own and they may not uh, feel comfortable yet in having that one-to-one. And that's our job to grow them in their confidence, to have a a relationship with God that nobody checks on, that they're not accountable to anyone for, that it really is them and God in a room, and they can talk about anything. And so to facilitate this encounter, this God connection, these times where you say, right, it's bedtime, let's just just lay here with God, and I'm going to chat to God in my head about how I'm feeling about going back. And why don't you chat to God about how you're feeling with him? But I don't want to hear it. You can do it in your head or you can whisper into your hands. But this really is just between you and God. That's my favorite times. And create space where you mutually, side by side, chat with God. You can say, I love chatting with God while I go out for a walk. Why don't we, you know, go out for our exercise together? But I'm just going to be chatting to God in my head. And you can feel free to do that too. You can lead it. You can say, right, you know, let's all spend some time chatting with God on our own just to God, and I'm going to suggest some things. So like, let's tell God one thing we're really going to miss about lockdown. And then everyone be quiet, chat to God in their head, whisper into their hands, and then suggest something else. One thing you're so looking forward to having lockdown being done about, and facilitate that so that they get into their heart and soul a comfortability with sharing the big stuff and the small stuff with God. It's really important that they're facilitated. And let's tell God one food you hope is going to be, you know, provided at school that you really missed. What pudding did you really miss that school gave you? The little stuff as well as the big stuff builds their confidence. But also in opening up this catch, we call it chat and catch. There's loads of resourcing on our parentingforfaith.org website about this and how to help your kids know God's voice, how to discern God's voice, uh, how to deal with it if they're struggling with catching God's voice. But this, this concept that God chats back and that it's not hard to catch what he's saying, but he, ca- he chats to us in so many different ways. Um, we can catch from God with our skin, and we can catch from God with our mind, and sometimes he drops pictures of imagination in there. Sometimes he gives us Bible verses. Sometimes we can catch with our emotions and feel his peace and joy. Sometimes we just know that we know. Sometimes we're just aware of his presence. Sometimes we catch in dreams. There's so many different ways of catching. But to give that space to ask God genuine questions, and to catch his response and to talk about it uh, and to build up that sense of, of praying. So even when you pray for your kids to leave space for encounter to say, when we pray, God chats back and we're just going to take a moment to catch with our whole body. I love when we do that. God comes close and he moves and he chats to us and and do What was that like for you? And to just take that moment of encounter. It's little moments. They don't have to be 20 minutes of plinky plink music and lights and smoke. It's just moments where God is faithful is so significant for our kids to facilitate that God connection. So maintain and grow your emotional connection with your kids so that we can be open and vulnerable about our doubts and our questions and our fears. Uh, Create windows into your life so they can see what a life with God lived honestly and authentically looks like so they can learn and, and pick up things for their own and facilitate their God communication, their God connection with chatting and catching so that they can talk about their emotions, big and small, with him. The fourth thing I would suggest, and we're not going to go into it here, is to help them find their purpose. Lockdown for a lot of children has 
switched us into quite a selfish survival mode. We're in our bubble, we're trying to survive, being around other people, and we're either desperate for more people or we're just shutting down because we're locked in with some, and we're in a very self-focused bubble. And to come back out and remind ourselves that we have purpose and a call and God is asking us to do stuff and we are active and purposeful is a really significant thing for our faith and for our kids' spiritual well-being. And we have, I think, two seminars uh, following up of this seminar, other parenting ones, that are talking about how do we help our kids find their purpose and how do we help them uh, become inspired and excited about mission and evangelism. So those are the next ones. But I would suggest that that can be something that has been missing from our children in lockdown and therefore missing from their, their faith. And that can be quite a significant thing to continue to, to sort of push past. Uh, I guess the other thing is just next steps. Uh, there are these seminars, there are web pages and courses. If you go to parentingforfaith.org, we have those things there for you. A free Parenting for Faith course, a podcast, uh, books that are available. Um, take some time to just um, sort of ponder and see what is next for your family? What is next for your kid? Parenting for Faith is all about asking, what is the next step for my child spiritually? And how can I help them take it? And for us, we're facing this emerging out of lockdown, this emerging into a season of freedom and of trying to figure out who you are in the world again. And our kids need God. They need to know his voice. They need to be able to face the transition with purpose and strength and know his presence when they're out there. They need to know they have a community around them in you and in others that they get to see that are there to surround them and support them. And they need to feel like the people who anchor them, you, are the people that have their backs and will help them navigate this whole thing and and there's always a next step and so it may feel huge but I would just really encourage you to ask yourself what's the next step for my child spiritually and how can I help them take it and just step into that it may be that the next step for them is some framing it may be that the next step for them is actually who is God in transition who is God in fear who is God in uncertainty um, some of our kids won't even question that some of our kids you'll notice that that question comes up well, where has God been and what is he doing and is it all just go back to normal and if that's their question then go okay that can be our next step and we can look in scripture and find those stories of transition and those stories of what happened you know Noah did this great transition coming out of the ark he was in lockdown for a significant amount of time and then he came out and was in awe of what has changed and he and he marked it with something. Maybe our family needs something to mark the transition with. Maybe we need to capture what we learned and be ready to transition. Or maybe we need to uh, provide some uh, spiritual moment where we, we do a ritual, where we burn something. I don't know. Uh, come up with something if that's what you feel is next for your family. Feel free to be creative and to respond to what's the next step. That's the main question. What is the next step for you? What is the next step for your kids? I just want to remind you that you got this. There are a thousand ideas out there, a thousand resources, a million different things you can do, but God has given you to your kids. He has given you to your children to be able to help them see, meet, and know God in their lives so they can know his love and guidance and touch and healing and significance. And that doesn't require you to be anyone else but you. You, on your journey, as you are, have 100% got this. You don't have to be super spiritual. You don't have to have been a Christian for a thousand years. You're just helping your kids take the next step. That's what parenting is. And that's what spiritual parenting is. And you got that. If you ever want any help, feel free to contact us through the parentingforfaith.org website or hook into the Parenting for Faith um, Facebook page. Uh, but hopefully I'll see you in the other seminars where we talk about purpose, mission, and evangelism and help our kids really walk who they're called to be. Wow, what a great session. Thank you, Rachel. That's only session one. We've got another two to come. So good. Thank you, Rachel. Um, and yeah, let's let's just take a moment just to pray. Um, and uh, yeah, so um, Holy Spirit, thank you for all that has been um, given to us by Rachel. Lord, I pray that you will help us to take it on board 
and um, so that we can help our children um, be parented well in the best way that we can do. God, I thank you that you love us and um, that this whole pandemic thing wasn't a surprise to you. Uh, but Lord, may we cling to you in this time and may we help our children and our young people to do that too. Come Holy Spirit. In your name. Amen. Amazing stuff. And uh, let me encourage you as well as a little reminder, nine o'clock uh, tomorrow morning, we have got our kids slot uh, with these guys uh, at the NWSA. Uh, we've also got the Space Cadet stuff, all of that. There's loads of stuff online for you to watch and download. There's also the app. Get involved. It is so much fun. And uh, yeah, we'll see you soon.